Hello guys, my name is Tu. So for this video, I'll be talking about how can we perform a simple structural simulation for the geometry as such. For example, we have um, one component over here and another separate component as well. So these are the hinge feature. So the hinge will allow only a single de degree of freedom uh, between the two components. Uh, then uh, for this particular component, uh, then uh, this model will have a hinge feature which will block, uh, uh, sorry, will have a locking mechanism which will lock the, um, the movement between the two. So assuming that I would like to apply a, 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 a vertical down, downwards force load over this end, and I would like to fix this end. So what will be the um, maximum allowable load uh, if I have this kind of locking mechanism design. So let's... Uh, so if you're just wondering why the geometry is not as smooth as it should be, for example, even, this, even though this is a circle, this is because uh, we have this uh, showing light weight and uh, showing the exact geometry representation. So if we are trying to... If we double click on the component, the Smoothness will slightly improve. If you go back to the parents level, then the smoothness is just um, using uh, a light weight. So if you try to right click and show right click on one of the children and show uh, exact, then this will show uh, exactly the better rendering of the geometry. So this is just some side topic. So let's move on to the simulation. So let's for to start off a simulation, we'll need to go to the Mouse tab and go to the pre-post uh, application. So in the pre-post application, we'll need to create two new files, which is called the fan and simulation files. So we'll go ahead and click on new fan and simulations. And we'll accept some of the settings such as uh, the geometry that is is uh, involved in these simulations are all uh, visible. Then the resolution we're just using the standards. Then the solver is using SimCenter Nasran, previously known as NX Nasran. Then the structural type uh, analysis. Then we'll click OK. And for this dialog box, we just put a name for this uh, simulation, such as solution one is OK. And the solution type is solution 101, which is the uh, fundamental uh, solution. Click OK to accept the default settings. So notice that currently the highlighted, uh, this is the hierarchy of the uh, files. Currently, we are working with this uh, uh, level, which is the FAM level. So in the fan level, you can see that the text is highlighted in blue color. So in the fan level, we we'll need to do the meshing and also defining the material properties. So for example, um, to meshing means you need to uh, discretize this geometry into simpler elements. The elements will have the standard formulas to do the calculation. So the e easiest uh, meshing that we'll be using is the automatic meshing by using the 3D tetrahedral. So click on this uh, 3D tetrahedral mesh and just uh, select all the geometries in one shot and click auto size per body. And notice that we'll be using the tetra 10, which is a, the standard element types for most uh, CAE solver for uh, a, better, a better accuracy of the results. So we we'll accept the uh, default settings. Uh, for example, the model cleanup options usually well, we can try to put 10%, but uh, in this case, we're just going to put zero. That means we are not going, going to simplify any, uh, uh, any tiny features. We are assuming that we are going to reserve, preserve all the curves, all the lines. So we just click OK. So this is how the default uh, mesh looks like. Uh, notice that not 
the default might not look good. For example, at, uh, you can, at this hole here, you can see that there is a very sharp uh, element uh, shapes. Probably we can try to do uh, an element quality check. Select display to, uh, that means I'm going to check all the meshes displayed currently. Check. As, as mentioned to you previously, this uh, element is not good. Therefore, we can try to reduce the element size. Okay, so specifically uh, on this piece of mesh. So, we try to go to the mesh. I'll be selecting this mesh and click on this. Uh, okay, I would, I'm just trying to find this mesh location, but not to worry. Let's try to find it down inside the hierarchy. So we go to this 3D collectors, uh, expand solid one. So this is the highlighted mesh. So we're going to try to remesh this guy. So the current element size is 11.4. Probably you can try to reduce the size to um, half of it, like six. Then we can try to, because um, this is there is a very tiny hole here. So options are available whether we, we can try to eliminate this hole if you think this hole is not relevant it's not so significant to the simulation purpose or we can try to uh, make this uh, simplify the mesh condition at this location so we can try to mesh quality options choose linear that means we are going to uh, have a linear uh, for example, this is linear currently. Uh, uh, linear means uh, the middle node will lie between uh, the two corner nodes. For example, this is a linear condition. But this is not a linear, this is a curvature because this is the middle, for assuming that this is the middle, uh, middle node. The middle node and this is the corner node. So let's just... Uh, uh, if you know what I mean. So, for example, this is a corner node, this is a corner node, then this is the middle node. So the middle node lies linearly between the two corner nodes. That means uh, this node will transfer to uh, exactly straight. Uh, by having a linear uh, selection option, you will, you will actually produce a more uh, a better uh, element quality at this location. So let's try to use linear and uh, select this mesh. Okay, I will select uh, this mesh and uh, choose So let's try to uh, double click this mesh Okay, then we we'll change the size to 6 element uh, mesh quality we choose linear so we will observe the change of the edge at this location press ok so this is the linear behavior therefore we can see that the middle nodes are now uh, exactly between the corner nodes so this is how the linear view looks like and also observe and by having a linear condition the mesh quality will improve and the drawback is the shape of the hole is compromised so therefore we need to um, uh, make a decision whether we want to keep this hole or not so let's say if i think this hole is not significant to the simulation purpose we can just go back to the simu uh, simulation model for example i can double click on the lowest uh, uh, hierarchy here what i can do is i can try to delete this tiny hole uh, okay, but uh, yeah so let's say if I can go back to the modeling application and for example this hole is currently located at this geometry okay so I will just double click this geometry click delete and select this hole to remove the hole and I can go back to my proposed application, go back to the FAMS hierarchy. 
So if you say there is uh, some modification, the holes are still here, but we have this update button because the geometry has changed. So we need to press the update button to actually update this particular mesh. So let's try to press the update button. Now the hole is gone and the quality as we can see is much better. Let's do a quality check again. And we will select display check elements. There are still, still some uh, uh, fill quality elements over here. So probably what we can do is just try to go back to the modeling application and delete the hole as well uh, to improve it. So, uh, but I will just try to solve it uh, for now and uh, let's see whether the solver is still able to solve it. Okay, now let's, assuming that I'm satisfied with the current uh, mesh settings, uh, I can try to go to define the mesh, uh, the material definitions. So to define the material definitions, we need to double click on this solid one, collectors, click on the uh, uh, properties, then we click on this uh, material to define the quality, uh, sorry, to define the material. For example, uh, the mesh is having a, a material of aluminium 6061, okay and okay. Then uh, we can, so basically um, the work for the fan file has been done. We can move on to uh, the simulation file, which is this the highest hierarchy. So then, oh sorry, actually I will need to define the hinge behavior as well. So for the hinge behavior, I will go back to the fan uh, hierarchy. I will be using the 1D connections and I will, I will need to do uh, one by one. So I'll be hiding the 3D collectors. I will hide the mesh for now. I will only showing some um, geometries. For example, I'll be showing only this geometry. So I'll need to specify a 1D connections to represent the coupling between uh, this surface to uh, this and this surface. So how do I do it? So come back to this geometry. We we'll define a 1D connection connections using the point to face. So there is a point here. This point I would like to choose the point between this point here and this point here. So to choose the middle point, you need to go to a more detailed uh, selections. Go to the point dialog. Choose uh, between two points. First, choose this point here and point this second point. So we can have the location between the two point at 50% between these two points here. So this is the point that I mentioned. Choose this face and click uh, OK. But before I click OK, make sure that the elements type is RBE2, which represents as a rigid beam element type 2. So let's click OK. So this is uh, this rigid beam will have an infinite stiffness. Uh, that means this beam, this 1D elements will not deform. Uh, it is representing the hinge uh, situation here. That means the shaft uh, is a rigid shaft, and we are not trying to. Uh, we, are, we are assuming that the shaft is very rigid, will not deform, and uh, we are more concerned about the hinge, uh, the locking mechanism here. Therefore, we are just uh, assuming that the shaft is infinitely. Uh, rigid. Now let's move on to the second um, geometry. So for this geometry as well, we'll be using the 1D connections and we're defining point to face. So the point again we'll be choosing from this point here to this point here. Oh, sorry, uh, we'll be using uh, between two points, choosing between uh, first point here and second point over here. So we'll be getting this point here which is very similar to the first um, uh, location. Then the face, we'll be choosing this face and also this face. Again, we'll be putting this uh, 1D connection mesh 
into the same same collectors, which is RBE2 collector number one. So here you can find the additional uh, collectors. So there are two um, separate mesh as such. So this two mesh is a uh, is built using the rigid beam elements type 2 uh, and we define the coupling between these two mesh to represent the hinge. So how do we do it? So we need to go to the simulation level, uh, simulation files, which is the highest hierarchy, double click. Then from here, we can have this solution, uh, active solutions here. Then we will need to define um, the connection between the two hinge. So I'll be showing the geometry. Now let's go to the uh, constraint type and choose manual coupling. So the manual coupling is responsible for the uh, coupling between the two uh, uh, 1D connections. So at the center here, if you use the quick pick command, you can have two nodes. Uh, these two nodes are due to the spider connections. So this, this node represents the enforcement to, from this point to the surrounding um, uh, phase. So therefore there are only two nodes here. So let's say I choose either one of them. It's okay. So just choose one and then choose another one. So I, yeah, just to make sure that you have uh, chosen the different nodes so I'll just try to do it again a uh, couple degree of freedom from here choose uh, three choose one of the nodes for example in my case it will be uh, 883 so this node will be 882 so I'll be coupling the these two nodes or on all degree of freedom so Degree of freedom 1 to 6 represents, so uh, degree of freedom 1 represents translation in the x direction. So if we have this, uh, as you can see in my screen, you can see that there is a, a coordinate system here. And the coordinate system is using the existing coordinate system. And degree of freedom 1 re represents uh, translation in the x direction. Degree of freedom 2, translation in the y direction. Degree of freedom 3, translation in the z direction. Degree of freedom 4, rotation in the x direction, x axis. Degree of freedom 5, rotation in the y direction. Degree of freedom 6, rotation in the z direction. So if I want to simulate a hinge, uh, hinge behavior, that means I will need to free off a degree of freedom number 4, which is rotation in the, y, uh, in the x axis. Meaning, uh, in other words, I would like to these two points we have uh, uh, we have data transfer in all the degree of freedom except degree of freedom four. Meaning, uh, the these two component is allowed is free uh, to rotate in the x axis. So these two component uh, is allowed to act, rotate freely without any resistance in the uh, rotational uh, x-axis here. So therefore, fixing all the degree of freedom except uh, number four, okay? Then we need to define, uh, because these two bodies are actually a separate mesh, so we need to um, glue them together so we can try to define surface-to-surface -surface gluing uh, using the automatic methods, we choose uh, create face pair. So we choose uh, polygon body to select specifically the bodies. So body one and two, click OK, and click apply. This will create the gluing uh, between these two geometry. Now let's try to do it again for this uh, this side. So let's try to create face pair between this geometry and this geometry, click OK and apply again. This will create the gluing uh, behavior between these two separate mesh. Then finally, we will need to, sorry, uh, not finally, but uh, we still need to define the contact between these two, this location here. 
So you need to create a surface to surface uh, contact instead of gluing. So to allow probably the, uh, the possibility of sliding or sticking between these two. And for surface to surface contact, we'll be using manual method because we will need to manually select the, geomet the geometries. So for the source region, we need to choose uh, specifically a polygon face of this and this. Because this two surface, you have possibility of touching this surface here. And click OK. And for the target region, we'll be selecting uh, this surface okay, using the polygon face. And click OK. Notice that probably there are some tiny uh, tiny penetration between the two geometry. So we, we try to specify a search distance in the negative direction. That means uh, we are trying to search uh, between the two, between the, re the region, source region and target re region. We try to search in the inward direction so that uh, probably to eliminate, to eliminate the, uh, any possibility of penetration. So we need to try to search negative one uh, in the negative in, in the inward direction for one millimeters, and in the outward direction for one millimeter as well. Right? For example, from this surface uh, normal to this surface, search uh, one uh, millimeters. So we click OK to accept the contact definitions. Finally, we need to define the uh, fixing location and also the boundary location. So for the fixing, we'll just choose fixed constraint and choose e one either side of the um, component. Let's say I'm choosing this side, click apply. So the fixed constraint will fix all the degree of freedom, uh, the, all the six degree of freedoms. So now let's try to define a force load on this phase. Assuming that the force that I'll be applying is just 5 kg, 5 kg is approximately 50 newtons, and the direction uh, is normal direction to this surface. So let's say if I try to push uh, this surface upwards in this direction, then therefore the contact will have its effect and uh, the, so the solution can converge. If I choose in negative direction, even the hinge will not uh, even this hinge behavior will not stop this component from uh, rotation behavior. So if you choose this direction, uh, the chances is you will not converge your solution. Uh, the solution will not converge, you will not get a result because the hinge behavior is allowing the uh, rotation behavior and uh, for solution 101, uh, rotation is not allowed. So therefore, you will fail according to solution 101. So for to get a meaningful result, we should push outwards in this direction. Okay, now let's click OK for now. And we'll try to run the simulation. So uh, before we run, we'll try to output some, uh, some contact uh, results. So let's go to uh, right-click solution 1 and click Edit and choose uh, the case control tab and output request so we can try to edit the existing output request click on the preview that means uh, these results are by default uh, are provided such as the displacement result the reaction force at the constraint location the stress results are all provided so let's say if i want to output glue, re uh, glue results or Contact, uh, contact results, so I can go to the Google result and click Enable and click on the contact results and click Enable. So let's try to preview again. So now currently there are more results being output. So let's try to OK and now we are ready to solve. So click on the Solve button and click OK to solve. So we can try to observe the convergence graphs. Okay, so now the solution 
has been converged. Let's look into the results. So cancel, uh, expand solution one, expand results, double click on structural nodes. Then we can try to see the displacement uh, quantum plot. Uh, notice that by default, the, the, the displacement is uh, exaggerated. Uh, so if you try to change the displacement to absolute one-to-one -one ratio, then this will be the actual um, displacement, which is four millimeters at this location. So if you try to uh, show the maximum location, which is uh, here, okay. Rotations, uh, there is no rotation results. So let's move on to uh, stress result. If there are two stress. So for 3D mesh, we'll be looking at stress element model and also average. So we need to try to average, turn on average, average results. So we can see that um, this is the maximum um, stress results. It's over here, and this hinge here. Okay. So we can also try to see the co contact force. So the contact force is approximately. Um, so we need to try to identify the results. So click identify the results and choose a uh, box visible because the contact force probably is not just one point not just a single point but it's a series of points so we need to use the box choose uh, probably a uh, few nodes together so the uh, the summation of the nodes here is about 140 uh, newtons so the new units are in newtons so these are the contact force and let's say we are looking come back to this uh, stress result so you need to know what is the allowable stress based on this design so let's say based on five kilograms of load the force uh, the stress obtained is 178 so we need to know what is the yield strength of this uh, component if you still remember that we have chosen um, the material is a 6061 aluminium so probably the aluminium when subjected to this kind of stress the aluminium will deform we need to know, find out what is the uh, yield strength of aluminium so let's for example if i go to search yield strength aluminium 6061 so, so we'll be looking at the tensile yield strength which is uh, two. Okay, so probably is this value here. So let's try to go inside. So um, okay, so this is the value. So. So when we are trying to compare this value 178 to this value over here 276 therefore we say that this value is lesser to the U strength and therefore uh, and therefore this area here will, will not experience U uh, condition will not experience U therefore we will say uh, if you're trying to un answer this uh, question whether my product is able to sustain five kilograms I would say uh, uh, under this condition your product will not yield and therefore you are able to sustain five kilograms of load and this is how we can compare uh, the warm ice stress to um, the data from uh, data, uh, material data fact sheets so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.